Well, hello everybody, and every once in a while, you guys in the comment thread bring something up that we might have missed or that you guys want covered, and I just have to address it. So that's where today's video comes in. And in this video, we are talking about the 5800X3D and whether or not this is, right now, at this point in time, the absolute best bang for buck upgrade for folks hanging on to older AM4 systems. Because a little while ago, I ended up publishing a video about AMD's most popular Ryzen CPU, so the 5600X, 3600X, and 2600X, along with the RTX 4090 to see how these performed against the new 7600X. Now in that gaming focus piece, I just wanted to see whether now at the end of AM4's lifespan, these CPUs had any life left in them. That's because right now you can find the 5800X3D for under 350 bucks. And in the last week or so, it's been consistently hitting about 330. I'll leave links below where you can still find it. At least that's south of the border, but other regions get some pretty hefty discounts too. For us, Canadians, Canada Computers has it for a very, very good price. And at Memory Express, it even made it down to $429 before selling out. But the Memory Express situation highlights why people need to move quickly if they want to jump on the 5000 series upgrade train. Take Newegg as an example. They're essentially sold out and their only 5800X3D listing comes from a Chinese reseller. Meanwhile, Amazon's still selling for a few bucks less than MSRP. More importantly, those sale prices put it pretty damn close to the 7600X's $300 price point. That makes it very, very tempting since you won't need to buy a whole new motherboard and DDR5 memory. And that money can be put towards a GPU upgrade or heck, even saved for a rainy day. This is the most desirable fan in the Air Kingdom and she's looking for a mate to release all the static pressure through the tiny gaps in the body of a radiator. Look closely at her blades and you'll notice a superior tip clearance, all for higher airflow. It is hard to imagine a better defense system when the corners are deployed, but she can also modulate her power for different mates while keeping a discreet profile. Choose be quiet and soar above the competition with the new Silent Wings 4 and Silent Wings Pro 4. So I guess that sets the stage for this little video because your comments got those rusty wheels a turn again and I wanted to find out whether the X3D is the ultimate upgrade for gaming from a bang for buck perspective for some of you guys who are still hanging on to those older systems. Because let's be honest, at $330, it is a record low price. But at the same time, the 5600X has also hit record low prices. Basically, it is going right now for about $150 to $156. So this one is gonna be an interesting one. And this is the test setup I'm gonna be using. It's basically the same as last time with the CPUs and the X3D added into the mix. But I do wanna point out a small typo from the last video too. Our DDR4 3200 modules on the 2600X were actually running with a latency of 14, 14, 14, not 16 that was originally shown. So sorry about that guys. Anyways, 1440p gaming doesn't start off too hot for the X3D and CSGO, where the 5600X beats it by a narrow margin while the 7600X is a mile in front. On the other hand, the 7000 series really struggled to deliver consistent 1% lows here. And personally, I think that's more important than the averages. The next couple of games really allow the 5800X3D to shine by either matching or beating the 7600X while also giving a pretty substantial uplift over the 5600X. And that really does put a hole in AMD's entire 7000 series narrative. It shows how next generation GPUs will allow this chip and the entire 5000 series lineup to really stretch its legs over the 2000 and 3000 series, while also highlighting how small of an uplift AM5 actually gives relative to its platform cost. And there's still some games that are obviously GPU limited too, and in those, the top three CPUs are essentially tied, except again in that all-important 99th percentile frame time. Another thing I want to address is the high average frame rates here, because it might look pointless, but they're actually not. 
Sure, anything over 165 is above most monitors refresh rate, but typically the 1% lows, the frame rate that determines how fluid a game actually feels, are flirting just above or below that point. That's something that you have to take into account here. Also, current high-end GPUs like the RTX 4090 are exposing the limitations of older architectures. And sure, you might not choose to jump right onto the new GPU bandwagon this generation, but you have to remember, something like the 4090 is laying the groundwork for where next year's 80 series cards will probably land. Not only that, but you have to remember that extremely high frames per second now builds a ton of future proofing into your system for potentially years to come. So maybe this year's 300 frames per second is next year's 165 when it comes to AAA games. And the other thing you have to remember is that monitor technology is not standing still either. So while 165 at a high resolution might be cutting edge today, in the future, refresh rates are bound to increase too. And speaking of monitor technology, let's get onto those 4K results too. And things do firm up here in CSGO, though I'm pretty sure there's not too many people playing playing this game at such a high resolution. There's also a few games that still show there's a processor bottleneck at 4K, and in these, the 5800X 3D can still give you better performance than the 5600X while trading blows with the 7600X. And if it hasn't become obvious already, anyone with a Ryzen 2000 or 3000 series CPU will see massive performance uplifts with a simple drop-in upgrade, but only provided their GPU is powerful enough. But in the vast majority situations, the X3D, 5600X, 7600X, and yes, even the 3600X are in a statistical dead heat and provide almost identical performance at 4K. All of them offer much better overall frame rates than the 2600X by a country mile. I mean, look, Zen Plus was great at the time, but it still struggles in gaming. So 3000 series owners who want a game at 4K or have a lower end GPU than the 4090 do have some life left in their CPUs, mostly due to GPU bottlenecking in most but not all situations. The same goes for ray tracing performance. Some games obviously face a massive GPU bottleneck as they struggle to get over 100 or in some cases even over 60 FPS here, so CPU selection obviously takes a back seat. On the other hand, you'll always run into some titles that see benefits from moving up the CPU chain. It's impossible to predict how future games will behave in this context, so I'd rather recommend erring on the side of a CPU upgrade even for RT situations. So I guess that's it and the main question in this video was to X3D or not to X3D? And obviously if you've got the money then absolutely the X3D is hands down the best drop in upgrade for gaming for people with older AM4 systems. But there's also one thing that I need to bring up and that is memory speeds. If you have one of those older 2000 or maybe 3000 series CPUs, you are absolutely gonna wanna find a way to be running faster than DDR4 3200. DDR4 3600 is that sweet spot if you need to do that through overclocking or if you wanna buy a new memory kit, now is the time to do it because it is so critical for the 5000 series. Basically, the 5800X3D will serve you for years to come and at its current price, if you can still find it, it sort of makes the 7600X feel a bit pointless as an upgrade path. Actually, forget about it. The 7600X as an upgrade path is a totally, totally terrible value. But I still wanna bring back my point from that first video that sparked this one. Basically, right now, and look, you can flame me in the comments down below, the 5600X with its under $160 price point still feels like a better buy if you wanna pump more money into your GPU upgrade. That goes doubly for 2600X and 3600X owners who might be more, I guess, budget constrained or don't wanna spend more than they originally did for a new CPU. Anyways, I'm gonna end this video a little bit different than I normally do, and that's to completely level with you guys and say, Personally, I absolutely hate recommending that you guys spend money on pointless things, but when it comes to 5000 series CPUs as a direct upgrade path to AM4, if you're waffling about this purchase in any way, shape, or form, I think it's actually time that you bite the bullet. There's two reasons for that. Number one is that we are seeing some record low prices 
for the 5000 series right now. And number two, because of those record prices and because of AM5's extremely high upgrade cost, we're seeing less and less of these things in stock. Because sure, in the future, these are gonna be available in the used market, but if you want new, now is the time to jump onto the bandwagon. So anyways, I wanna thank all of you guys from the bottom of my heart for commenting in that last video, opening up my eyes that we needed to add the X3D before these 5000 series are completely gone from the new market. If you have any other comments, please, again, let me know. I'm Mike with Harbor Canucks, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.